After building dozens of voice agents, these three key dynamic variables deliver the smartest, most human-like agents. In this video, I'll break down these three dynamic variables so you can start building advanced, personalized voice agents in retail AI. If you're new to the channel, my name is Lenny Cowens, and alongside my partner, Terrell, we've been building and selling voice AI solutions through our AI agency 601B for the past 12 months. So dynamic variables are variables that you can insert in prompts that personalize conversations for individual callers. Here's how dynamic variables work in retail AI. For inbound voice assistants, when a voice assistant receives an inbound call, it sends out a webhook to an automation platform. In our use case, it's going to be make, and via make, it's going to extract that lead or caller information via a CRM or a CSV. In our case, it's just gonna be Google Sheets. And after it extracts that information, it will send that right back to the voice assistant to insert into the prompt to have on call for that conversation. For outbound voice agents, when a call is triggered, the data is extracted from that same CRM or CSV and imported directly into the voice assistant prompt before the call is initiated. So on the call, again, the voice assistant will have those variables to use to personalize the conversation. So what does this look like in retail? Something like this. As you see here, we have a customer information section that we've added to this prompt. And this is an extra category specifically for the dynamic variables, but we also have this current time dynamic variable down here as well. So let me quickly explain the difference between these two types of dynamic variables. The current time dynamic variable is specifically straight from retail. There are a set of dynamic variables that retail provides for us to automatically insert into our prompts and the current time is one of them. One thing to note, the current time is populated in American Los Angeles time zone. So take that into account and adjust as necessary. A way to adjust that is to simply add a text after this, something on the lines of, please convert this to uh, American Chicago when, in, when using in conversation. And then it'll do exactly that. So when it comes to dynamic variables, well, how do you insert them into a prompt? Well, it's all about the format. So to format a dynamic variable, it's double curly brackets on either side of the actual variable name, all lowercase, and separate each name, if you'd like, not by a space, but with an underscore. As you see here, the three key dynamic variables that we use in all of our voice assistants are the first name variable, if applicable. So if we're able to access the first name, we'll always have this as a dynamic variable. It just really improves the process and eliminates that stage of having to collect the full name, which adds extra friction on the call. The current time, because this gives the voices agent a reference for the current date and time, and it just gives it a bunch more capabilities on the call. And lastly, caller history. Caller history is huge. So this dynamic variable is actually grabbing and extracting the previous call history or conversation outcome with the caller and feeding it into the prompt. So the voice assistant will have an understanding of what happened prior. So it might be able to use that information on the call that it's currently on with that customer. We have a couple extra dynamic variables that we included as well in the email and address. And I added these based off of the use case. So the use case for this voice agent is it's an inbound voice agent that handles calls for an electrician business. Now, this voice assistant extracts the call reason, then based off of the call reason, takes specific paths. If they need a service visit, it will actually extract the reason for that service visit and book that in cal.com. But more specifically, if the lead is a return caller, it won't need to collect any of the additional information in their name, their email, their address, um, and additionally, it will have that call history, so it will understand if they're calling about something that's reoccurring. So that's really great for in-conversation personalization. One thing that you do need to do with every inbound voice assistant that you want to use dynamic variables with, you need to use this inbound call webhook URL. So this is where you input the webhook from your automation platform to extract those dynamic variables. So let's go ahead and review that now. And don't worry, you can access both the inbound and outbound voice agent templates that we're going to be reviewing in this video, along with these make scenarios in our free school community by clicking the link in the description. If you are a voice AI agency owner and serious about making money building and selling voice agents, Voice AI Accelerator might be for you. It's a free community for agency owners to share their journeys on acquiring customers and building great voice AI solutions. So if this does sound interesting to you, 
go ahead and click the link in the description. So now that we're in make, let's review this inbound dynamic variable scenario. It all starts with the webhook as we just talked about. So when it comes to copying the webhook, you just copy it here and paste it directly into this field for the voice assistant. So the first step after the webhook step is formatting the number. So this is the number of the caller and that's received from that webhook message. And what we need to do is format the number so that it will match the format seen in one of these Google Sheets. All right, so that's what we're doing here with this prompt. And after we get the results from this in the correct format, what we'll do is now search our lead list for that specific lead to extract any details. And I'll go ahead and show you guys that now. This is our lead list. And as you see here, these would this would be filled up with all of the leads information, including their first name, phone number, email, property address, and lead status, which is important for outbound calls. Now, when it comes to the second list or second Google Sheet that we're also searching for, this has to do with the end of call report. And that is something that we will review in the post-call analysis video. So check that out if you want to do a deep dive into post-call analysis and end of call report and all of those things. But we are reviewing the end of call report here to extract that last calls summary or last calls outcome. So based off of what we have here, this is the call dashboard. And this is all again, based off of post call analysis and post call information. So for this basic dashboard, it has the date and time, the from number, the call summary transcript, as well as the call recording. So the call summary is what we're interested in. So from this step, what we're doing is collecting the most recent call summary. And how we do that is based off of ascending order because the calls are being updated in that call dashboard, bottom to top. So the newest will always be at the bottom. So that's why we want ascending order, limit one. And that's the same for here as well. Limit one is something that, or not necessarily because there's only going to be one result here. So limit isn't necessary. But when it comes to extracting the call history, you do need to limit to one. So that's one distinction between these two steps to pay attention to. All right, but other than that, they're pretty, pretty similar here. Just different documents where they're trying to extract information from. But after it searches and it finds rows of matching based off of the phone number, it then allows us to import those variables into the response message. So the first name extracted from that Google Sheet would be put here, the email, property address, and caller history accordingly. All right, so when it comes to this specific scenario, the things that you guys would need to update to have this thing working, for one, you have to create your own Google Sheets and update information from there. For two, you need an open AI account. And for three, you do need to import your API key into the response webhook, all right? And it's just right here. This is one field you guys need to update from the template provided in our free school community, all right? But this is what the voice assistant will receive and it will dynamically import all of these variables into the prompt. Let's go ahead and give this voice agent a call and test the inbound dynamic variable scenario. Hello, thanks for calling Spark Pro Electric. My name is Katie. How can I help you today? Yeah, Katie, what's my name? Your name is Lenny. How can I assist you today, Lenny? Yeah, um, what it was the result of my last call with you guys? I know something occurred. During your last call with us, you reported an issue with the bathroom lights and requested an electrician. We confirmed your contact information and scheduled an appointment for the following day at 12 p.m. Is there anything else you need help with? No, that's it. Thanks. Perfect. It extracted all of those variables perfectly. Um, so it got my name. It got my previous call history, which was extracted from the call dashboard that we showed. So now let's revert over to an outbound use case and show you exactly how to trigger that. So back in retail, when it comes to an outbound voice agent, it's pretty much exactly the same, but the adjustment is how it's triggered. Also, we did adjust the prompting of this voice agent to make outbound calls as is objective, as well as when it's calling individuals back, which is its specific use case, it calls them back based off of missed calls and tries to extract the reason why they called to convert that to a sale or just resolve whatever issues they were having. We do want this to say the initial first message and that initial first message is, hello, my name is Katie and I'm calling you back from Spark Pro Electric. Am I speaking with Lenny? 
So here you could input another dynamic variable for this specific voice agent. We will, and I'll show you how to do this in real time. We'll do boom, 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 double brackets. And then we'll put first underscore name. And there we go. So now when it calls me and triggers me based off of my dynamic variables that are inserted into the prompt, it will import my first name immediately, immediately personalization. So let's quickly review and make how this all goes down. Retrieving dynamic variables for outbound voice agents is slightly different in the sense of you don't need a webhook. It's all triggered from a CRM or a CSV, essentially a lead list. And the lead list we're using is that same lead list. And again, the most important part is this lead status because that's what we're gonna be referring to to extract the lead information for that call trigger and for those dynamic variables. So what we're doing here is searching for that row. And if a row says not called as the lead status, then it will extract that lead information and trigger a call. Now you can call 20 at a time. So that is something to note. Um, but ultimately for our use case, we're only gonna be just calling one. The second row that we're searching for is going right back to the call dashboard to extract the most recent call summary or call results. And then this stage, again, instead of formatting the number to be able to search the Google Sheet, we need to format it back to be able to trigger a call. So that's putting that plus right back in front of the phone number so that it can trigger appropriately in retail AI. And then lastly, is this step, which is an HTTP post request to actually trigger the outbound voice agent. So the things that you guys need to fill in here from this template that will be provided in our resource hub in our school community, your API key from retail, your agent phone number, and that's the phone number in retail that you've imported or just purchased straight from retail, along with the agent ID. And you can find the agent ID right here in the agent ID field. So after you have everything plugged up and ready to go, all of this information will be dynamically imported to trigger the voice assistant and extract these dynamic variables. So the two number will be extracted, the first name, email, property address, along with the call history. So let's trigger this outbound voice agent and give it a shot. Katie, and I'm calling you back from Spark Pro Electric. Am I speaking with Lenny? Yes. Great, Lenny. I'm just following up on your request for an electrician to check the bathroom light. We have an appointment scheduled for tomorrow at 12 p.m. Is there anything else you need assistance with? Um. So what was my last call about? Your last call was about an issue with the bathroom light and you requested an electrician to come and take a look. We scheduled an appointment for tomorrow at 12 p.m. to address this issue. Is there anything else you'd like to know or need help with? No, that's it, thank you. Perfect, so it works seamlessly. It extracted the information, including my name, the call history, and those other variables, and ultimately, that can be used to further personalize a conversation. Well, that's it for today, and if you found this video valuable, please hit that like button. It really helps us reach the wider audience. If you wanna see more content on Voice AI, make sure to smash that subscribe button along with that notification bell to never miss another one of our videos. We'll catch you next time. Peace.